we we want to thank you for your uh, generous gift, and you can be sure it'll be used for the upbuilding of the church. We we'll turn the service over now, Brother Jim. Thank you, Doc. You've been a good good running mate. We've done it for years. I want to thank everybody for being here today. You came for a purpose, uh, and I pray that you find it for your own personal life. I always tell people, you got to be comfortable in your skin, not somebody else's. And by that, I simply mean a vast majority of people in this world today are trying to emulate someone else or be like someone else or dress like someone else or live like someone else. You need to be comfortable in your skin because that is where God looks at us. I've done just a little bit of before I read the scripture this morning. I want to share with you some things that maybe you haven't even stopped to think about. How many times your heart beats a year? Anybody, anybody ever figure that out? Raise your hand. You haven't done that? You could miss six or seven or eight beats somewhere in that area in your history. You see, we get caught up with everything looking at something else and we forget about ourselves. What you can become, what God wants you to become, not pressured by someone else. And, and I really do. Of course, it's always been this, this way. Every generation has had its peer pressure. Most of us want to be like somebody else. Kids go to each other and talk about their trouble and they can't even take care of the trouble they've got because parents haven't taken time to talk to them. How many conversations went on this week with your children sitting around a meal? Don't raise your hand. There's things wrong with our world, and we know it's wrong. But we just don't have time to take care of it. And before you know it, you're out of time. Time is a valuable commodity. Some of us, time has caught up with us. Others, it's right on your heels. And it's persistent. You should not put off today what you intend to do tomorrow. Because it may not get here. I found that being active in doing the things that God has told us to do is when I'm the happiest. I find myself depressed when I think about other things. What could have been. Could have, should have, would have been. And we spend a lot of time in that area. And those are some of the devil's favorite working tools. He works that very well uh, about our appearance and about how we appear to someone else or how our home looks to someone and how uh, it goes on and on. And there ain't no happiness. Everything that your hand touches today with time will disappear. Your countenance will disappear. <laughs> you want to see? I'm going to pull my skin tight so you don't see the wrinkles. Do you realize that everything that you touch today will disappear? Jesus said, where your treasures are, there will your heart be also. 
what he's simply saying about what you care about the most in life is going to be in your head. And your head is going to take your feet and your hand somewhere and you're going to be doing this. And people say, I don't have time for the church. I don't have time for God. Well, let me tell you something. Let me send it the other way. God may not have time for you or time to do anything. I broke down time and as usual I had it in my little green book Danny I believe it's in there time alright let me see if I can not only is my memory failing my sight and everything else but I'm having fun don't want your sympathy at all Danny gets that thing open he might find it I don't know Sue, I thought I was well prepared. It's not in here. So I'm going to take it off the top of my head. Eight hours a day. Dickie, you stop me if I get in the middle of this. Dickie's my good sounding board. Eight hour, or 24 hours in a day, seven days a week. Best I remember, that's 158 or 168. Okay, let's establish that. All right. We're going to break it down into eight hours of sleep. That's all you're getting. If you're getting more than that, we're going to cut it out on you. That's enough for anybody. There's, there goes eight out of the 24. Well, got to work eight. No, some of you are pulling tens and twelves and fourteen. You better stop and think about that. You lay a million dollars up here and somebody else will have a bowl on it and you will have missed living life. And don't tell me about work. Come and talk to me sometime. I know what it's like to pull 12 and 14 with four kids and you're making a dollar an hour. You're not having a hard time. It's, you're forcing it on yourself. Why do you have to work that long? Because I got bills to pay. Who made the bills? Who made the bills? I've been with a lady that's low maintenance for 58 years, and I tell kids today, if you want to be successful, you better get you a low maintenance woman. <laughs> I wanted to do this sermon today because we're closing the year out. Some of you are going to sit back there and make resolutions uh, to do this on the first day of the year, and you'll break it on the second. There's nothing that you have done that I haven't. So don't try to con me. I preach the gospel the good old way. Hell for brim nation. Heaven to gain and hell to shun. It's your decision. You make it. We make our own problems. We set up our own traps. And then we turn around a lot of people and blame God for it. Like God gets in your personal affairs. He doesn't. That's your affairs. The only fire He's got with you, are you ready to go to heaven or do you want to spend eternity in hell? That's the only decision that you'll make that God is connected with. Only decision. Are you comfortable in your skin this morning? Are you as comfortable as I am? Back in 1968, or 86, we're really back the basketball program made a turnover. I'm sure he wouldn't care for me telling you this. Well, George Bellamy was going to be the coach. And George Bellamy was just barely out of college. He had never coached. And so they asked me if I would help him. I'd helped some years before. Not that I know that a lot about it, but I, I knew humanity. I knew, I knew, you know, personalities. That's important. You know personalities? It's, it's important. One of the first things I told him, I said, don't make a rule that you can't enforce. Don't, and in your personal life, don't make a rule that's not enforceable. All it will do is cause problems. 
in your life. You make a rule and you can't enforce it. There's nothing but strife. Now, back to the time. Give you eight hours sleep, eight hours work. What do we do with the other? Where are your treasures? See, the preaching of the world today has used God as a doormat. They really have. They're saying, treat Him any way you want to. Live any way you want to. Time comes to die. He'll take care of you. He sure will. Yeah. That's not fair to the old saints that I've seen in the past that worked and sweated and bled for something. They had a purpose. What is the purpose today of the church? Are we losing our purpose? We're talking about eight hours. Now what have we done with it? Well, somebody's already said I work 14. you got a problem. I feel for you. Because you're missing out on so, so much. But if we take that area of ours and we say, okay, at Lacey Creek, they have a Sunday school. I can't get up. I'm too tired on Sunday to get up. You slip eight hours. Your body will regenerate. So what happens to the kids? Kids don't go. Kids grow up teenagers. What do they know about right and wrong? God, about love and affection and family and all of this stuff. What do they know about it? They got Sunday school. And then they got church. That's two hours. Two hours. Two hours. So you still got six. During the week, a good church, let me tell you something. A good, well-rounded, founded church will have things for their people to do. And we've got it here. There ain't a thing going that we couldn't afford to do. And there's nothing that we've got in line that would be bad for you. we got a Bible study on Wednesday night. We're studying about Job. What can you tell me about Job? Well, I don't know. Boy, is that good advertisement to your friends out in the world. But that is there. Now that's three hours a week if you want to do it. Now we're taking into consideration health. We're taking into consideration that you may have someone you need to take care of. Those come first. But I'm talking about young, vibrant, healthy people. We have a thing here on Sunday night. So the church is offering. We're just not getting much response. Maybe that's the time we're living in. The Bible said there'd be a time come when they would not endure sound doctrine. The Bible said there would be a falling away before Jesus wraps up everything and comes back to claim the body of Christ. Falling away. And in that falling away, he said, iniquity, which is evil, which is sin, he said it will abound. Is he right? Or is he wrong? Look at your world and analyze it. And so having said all of this, if you will turn with me in your Bible to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah. And I want to go to the seventh chapter and the fourteenth verse. Why would I pick this one? Remember, Isaiah was a prophet of God hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. The Bible's full of it about his coming. He said, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Timed right down to the very name hundreds and hundreds of years before it happened. And it did happen. 
I want to go now, if you will, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Remember what Isaiah said. Here it happens. Here it happens. In Isaiah 2, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all of the world should be registered or taxed. This census first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, every one, to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and of the lineage of David. There's an interesting thing there. Do you know that Jesus was connected on both sides of the house? Think about it. How deeply we need to think. By the way, I was thinking, uh, did you all get your census thing? You got it in the mail yet? What? Well, anybody else got theirs? They're after me. <laughs> I got mine. And, it, and it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. And what, they were even doing that back in. They wanted to know the population, the households, and stuff like that. They do it ever so often. Uh, I got mine, and nobody else did. Boy, I'm feeling more alone all the time. <laughs> but I wanted to make that point. That's not a bad thing. And they did it there in Joseph because his lineage went back to David. He went up to be registered. That had been prophesied. All of those things had been prophesied step by step by step. God has a plan. If you don't believe it, that's okay. You ain't going to stop nothing. There's nothing I can do and say that is going to stop it or alter it or change it. It's in motion. And it's going to happen. The only thing we can be is a part of it. <clears throat> there used to be a an old country song that said, don't go riding that long black train. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that one. You need to get on board. But it's your decision. I love every one of you. You've been a family to me. Uh, I love this place. I don't have any bad memories of anything. I've blotted those out. But there's a new year coming up. If you're not going to keep it, don't make a resolution. That's the best way. Don't make a resolution if you're not going to keep it. If you've been thinking about becoming a Christian, maybe God has spoke to you. Is He still doing it? Is He still doing it? Do you still care? How long does that last? God's going to be there whether I obey Him or not. He is God. And you're blessed and fortunate if He speaks to you today through His blessed Word. You are blessed. You have an opportunity to do something about it. As I close, I'm going to do a little something differently than i planned. I want you to, if you will, turn in your hymn book to number 605. One of the reasons I want to do this, we'll close on... Uh, joy to the world. But there may be someone here that's ready. You heard the voice of God. Now you're ready to do something about it. Here we go.
Simply all you do. You got it. And everybody's been through it. Right. When I came to this place in 1961, the work was already done, and I got up out of my seat. And I confess that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, before man. Now, he said, that's got to happen. It's got to happen. You'll do it here or there. And then I was baptized for the remission of sin. And I became a new creature. It's that simple. So if your homework is done, you have worked it out with God. You remember, if you go back to Saul of Tarsus, and the Bible said that he was praying. When Ananias got to him, he said, Get up. Arise. Be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. If your homework is done, you just need to do those two things. And we're going to give you an opportunity. It may be, you may have 10 or 12 more. You may not have one. Think about it. Find purpose in your life if that's what you want. If you don't have a home church, the church of Christ is worldwide. It's not this congregation. They're going to come from everywhere that have done what the Lord has said to do. That is His church. It's from all over. But if you need a home church, that's important. You're going to need one sometime in your life or your family's going to need a church. You're going to need people to pray with you, stand by you, cry with you, laugh with you, share life with you. And if you would like to do that and take a membership here, it's not necessary for salvation. But everybody needs a home. We're going to stand and sing number 605. This is a good song of admission. I sing it to myself quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Just